Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. Today we're counting down the top 10 video game myths. We'll be touching on some myths that have turned out to be false and some that are actually true. So let's jump right in. Starting off this list with a number that we've talked about in a few of our other Pokemon videos, we've got Lavender Town Syndrome in at 10. The myth with this one is that the music that plays when you are in Lavender Town was responsible for a ton of children's illnesses and suicides. It's rumored that about 200 children had killed themselves after getting to Lavender Town, and the ones who didn't commit suicide usually complained of severe headaches. And because of this, developers adjust the music to be at a lower frequency. I don't know how I feel about this one, what do you guys believe? And at number 9 is the Lara Croft new cheat. While there are other cheats in the game that let you do things like explode Lara, check out our list of top 10 video game cheats if you want to see more on that. The myth that there was a cheat code that would allow you to get naked Lara Croft is, well, just a myth. Developers never actually put it in any of the games. But fortunately for all of you nudie seekers out there, fans of the game have gone to great lengths to make nude mods for Lara. So it turns out there's still a way for you to get your kicks after all. And at number 8 is Super Mario Bros 3 is a stage performance. So this one started off as a fan theory, but was confirmed by Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto. The game begins with curtains opening, shadows constantly appear as if they're on a backdrop, and Mario always exits stage right. So the theory was that it was a stage play and the gamers were the audience members. When asked if the theory was true, he just simply nodded yes. So I guess there you go guys. And at number 7 is EverQuest Suicide. Back in 2001, a 21 year old named Sean Woolley committed suicide after he'd been playing EverQuest. His mother blamed the game for prompting him to do it, saying that she had to tell him that the people in the game that he was encountering weren't actually real. This had spawned an urban legend that the game would force players to kill themselves, and the game being the cause of Sean's suicide was further perpetuated by the media. This one is quite false though. While what happened to Sean was pretty tragic, there's no proof that the game actually influencing players to commit suicide. Despite Sony Online Entertainment refraining from looking into Sean's personal account data. And at number 6 is Halo Pistol Intentionally Overpowered. If you've played Halo, you've noticed the difference between the M6D personal defense weapon, aka the basic looking pistol in the game, is pretty damn powerful. To the point where there was a myth circulating that developers had done this intentionally. And guess what? The myth is true. It was confirmed by Jason Jones in 2013 that they had actually adjusted the power of the gun before they shipped the game out. And at number 5 is Atari buried copies of E.T. in the desert. Here's a hilarious one. So some of you may know that Atari's adaptation of Steven Spielberg's classic film E.T. was a total bomb. Some say it's one of the worst games ever created by the company. And to be fair, it was whipped together in six weeks time. And a ton of copies that were made just never ended up selling. So what did Atari do with all those unsold copies? Buried them in the desert, of course. Like ditching a body of a person you accidentally murdered, Atari dumped a bunch of their unsold stock in the desert back in 1983. And a documentary crew dug it up, along with other unsold games in 2014. And at number 4 is GLaDOS Bondage Woman. Have you ever noticed the similarities between GLaDOS and, well, a real life woman? Take a closer look. Many have speculated that GLaDOS is modeled after a woman in a straitjacket hanging upside down. While this hasn't been confirmed as truthful, the makers of Portal have stated that they were inspired by Bondicelli's Venus and wanted to make GLaDOS look like her hanging upside down, but also decided to go with something else and use some feminine lines with the structure. And we end up with this as the product. What do you guys think about this one? And at number 3 is Half Life Sex Monster. Keeping with the sex motif here, let's get into something a bit more disturbing at this number. So, rumors had spread about an alien cut from Half Life that raped players. It would drag them and then force itself onto them. Turns out this one is true. The alien was dubbed Mr. Friendly. <laughs> And it was the size of a small horse. It ate corpses of dead enemies, and it would stand on its rear legs and spank the player. And would also vomit as an attack. Sounds like a fun time. Oh, and let's not forget the best part. It would drag its victims towards them until fatal copulation had occurred. It spawned a discussion between Gabe Newell and Ted Backman about the use of sexual themes to elicit a response from the innate homophobia of 14 year old boys. Luckily, they decided having an unsettling raping creature in the game was a bad idea, so it got ditched before the game came out. And at number 2 is Aliens in GTA 5. It's been speculated since its release that there are aliens in GTA 5, aside from Michael's grassroots mission where you have to shoot down a bunch of imaginary aliens, that is. This is mainly due to a plethora of alien easter eggs and hints scattered throughout the game. There was an alien egg model buried deep in the code of the game, which had no scripting attached to it or any specific functionality, until a recent update got people stirring through the conspiracy pot again. Through a tool called Codewalker, users discovered a bunch of unused alien props in the game, and that Rockstar had attached hash IDs and scripts to the egg, meaning they might actually be planning to do something with it. The mystery is only beginning to unfold. And finally in our number one spot is Michael Jackson wrote part of the soundtrack for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This one started off as a myth, and while it seems to have been confirmed, it's still shrouded in a whole lot of mystery. So the myth is that Michael Jackson wrote the soundtrack for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Some involved with the development say that his music was dropped after the sexual abuse allegations that arose in 1993. 
1993, with the game being released in 1994. Whereas others say he finished the work on the game, but due to the sound quality of the Sega Genesis, he wanted to be uncredited. Check it out for yourself, specifically the uncredited music, the Ice Cap Zone theme, and Carnival Night Zone theme. There we have it friends, what do you guys think of these myths? Do you think the unconfirmed ones are true? Let us know in those comments below. And as always, if you dug this video, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. But for now, I've been Kelly Pally for Top 10 Gaming and I'll catch you guys in the next one.